Hey guys, Matt Dancho here. And today what I wanna share with you is how to automate data cleaning with my free AI Copilot. It's part of my new data science team that I'm building in Python. All right, so real quick, before I dive into the code here, what I wanna share with you guys is this AI data science team. It's available in GitHub. So all you'll do is you just go to this AI data science team. I got a link in the video notes here. And what this thing does is it's, uh, my idea is to have a bunch of, basically like an army of co-pilots. And we're gonna be exploring one of them today, which is going to be used for data cleaning and automating data cleaning for yourself. So it's pretty cool. I think it's uh, really awesome. Actually, I think it's the future of data science. So let's get started. But for more information, you can check out this GitHub repo, which is gonna have this full army of uh, co-pilots that you can use to do cool stuff. Um, all right. so. Uh, I've got my code base open and this is in my free AI tips. If you haven't joined my AI tips newsletter, it gets you access to all of this code I'm on the third one right now. And what I'm going to be doing is using this AI tips newsletter to really explore some of these cool things that I'm building with AI that applies to data science. So the problem here is that data, cl data cleaning is a time consuming process that keeps us from analyzing data and getting business insights faster. So the idea is, is if we automate the cleaning process, we can get clean data that we can start to explore and start to do other stuff and actually get business insights. So my goal here today, I've got three goals for you. This is what we're going to cover. So first thing, expose you to my new AI data science team of co-pilots. We kind of already did that. I showed you the GitHub repo. We're going to create an AI co-pilot to automate data cleaning. All right. And that's really the big benefit out of this one. I'm going to show you how you can basically import this dense and you can grab agents whatever agent you need the one we're focusing on today is, is cleaning and we're going to use it to clean a customer churn data set if you guys want to check out the github repo that's this link again i'll put the link in the video notes i do have a recommendation for installation so don't install off of pip like pip install ai data science team use this instead and what that'll do is actually install off of the github page so you get the latest and greatest version um, this is all kind of being updated very fast and I'm building in the open. So that's what uh, this series of videos is going to cover, like kind of expose you to everything that I'm making and all the cool stuff. So you'll want to save this link here because you're going to want to update this frequently if you begin to use it. Okay. So first things first, how do we get started here? So we're going to load these libraries. I'm hitting shift and enter all of this code here that you're seeing today is just in this O3 data cleaning copilot. So I've just imported these libraries, so Langchain OpenAI. If you don't want to use OpenAI, you can also use Olama or whatever other version of, or Anthropic or, or you know, Bedrock or, or whatever you want to use. It's very customizable. So you can use whatever LLM that you, you want, whatever is your favorite, whatever your work allows you to do if you're doing this at work. And uh, some of these other imports, I'll show you where they're used as we go through the code. Uh, but the real thing is we're going to be importing from AI data science team agents import make data cleaning agent okay and that's going to load in this data cleaning agent and you can go through the doc string and it's got some examples in here of how you can use it so to set this thing up what i'm going to do here and this is just because to kind of keep everything separate from my other r tips i'm going to set a path root which is going to be the directory that we're working out of today that's this o3 automate data cleaning ai copilot when you go to, to set up an llm you're going to need an OpenAI API key. I'm not going to really cover that in this video, but if you go to OpenAI, if you basically set up an API, they ask you for a credit card in exchange, they give you a API key. And you're going to put that right in here. Once you get your API key, and then this will work for you. I have mine saved in a special location. Uh, so that's why I'm going to run this here. And that's going to load in my API key. The model that I recommend you using for this tutorial is GPT-40 Mini. And that is a very cost-effective model. Uh, honestly, I've been using it and it, you know, ton, tons and tons this month and it get, keeps getting cheaper and cheaper. I think I've spent like less than a cent on you know massive number of API calls. So uh, I'm gonna load this. Uh, for logging, we're gonna set logging equal to true and that's because I wanna store the function. We're actually gonna create an AI functions or an AI function and it's gonna be stored here. AI is gonna create it for us. And then that's why we're giving it this log, this OS path. It's going to get our current working directory, which is my free AI tips folder. And then it's going to, we're going to append it to the path root, which is this here. And then I'm going to tell it to log it in this folder here, AI functions. Okay. So that's why we're setting log equal true and the log path. 
All right, and then the final thing is we're gonna load in a data set. The data set's located here. So I've, I've pulled in, I've just run all of this code. You can see the info here on that data set. And we're gonna explore some of this stuff. But what I'm gonna eventually point you to is like some of this stuff is, is not, not clean. For example, total charges, that's a numeric feature. Right now it's stored as an object, which is like a string. So we need to go in and fix this data set up a little bit so we can do further an analytics with it. So uh, to, to take advantage of this AI Copilot that's gonna automate the cleaning process for us, what we're gonna do is we're gonna first set up our LLM. Like I said, for this tutorial, I'm using Chat OpenAI, uh, their GPT-40 Mini. If you don't wanna use that, this is where you'll change that function to Chat Anthropic or uh, Chat Olama uh, from Lang Langchain. So if you get familiar with Langchain, um, this is how you'll set up your LLMs. We've got an LLM now set up. I'm connected to OpenAI. All right, so we have that. We're gonna use this make data cleaning function, and that's gonna be the thing that allows us to create this agent. It's a data cleaning agent. So if you check it out here, you can see kind of like what it does internally, some of the parameters. We're not gonna do human in the loop with this tutorial, but I'm gonna share a future tutorial how to include human in the loop, but uh, we'll go over some of the basics of how to set this thing up. So. Let's first run this and I'm gonna uh, share what it returns. So we've just set up this data cleaning agent and you're gonna see when it outputs, if you have the latest version of LangGraph installed, which it'll, it'll be installed when you install the AI data science team, you're gonna see uh, a graphic that looks like this. And um, it's going to sh uh, show you that there's like a, these boxes, which are called nodes. So there's you know, several nodes here. And then there's like these dotted lines. So these are edges and they, they're directed one way. So this is what we call a directed acyclic graph. And it's basically a series, a sequence of steps that it's going to go through and decide what needs to be done. So right now it goes from recommended cleaning steps. So it's going to recommend some steps that we, based on what our data looks like, it's going to recommend some steps. And then the next LLM call is going to create some data cleaner code. So it's actually going to AI, uh, use AI to generate the code. And then it's going to execute the code on the data set. And if there's any problems, what it's, what's going to happen is it's going to go through a little loop here where it tr attempts to fix the code and then explains the code. Once it's successful, it'll explain the code and then we'll end. All right. And when we end this, we'll have our function. We'll have our automated our data cleaned. And, and we'll have everything we need to basically create a data cleaning pipeline. Very cool. All right, so let's see how this sucker works. I'm gonna clean the data now. And the way we do this, this will take a few seconds to run because it's gotta go through each one of these steps and you can kind of see the progress that's being made. So right now the, the recommend cleaning steps is, is being performed um, or it's uh, is complete. Um, it's executing the agent code. It looks like uh, it's finished here and it's printed out some diagnostics and then it's now completed explaining the code. For me, this took about 20 seconds. Okay, not bad because you're gonna see what all uh, was just accomplished. So um, to uh, just to further explain what we did here, we ran this invoke method on that, um, that object, this, app, this like agent application uh, that was created. Uh, we provided it some user instructions. Don't remove outliers when cleaning. If you highlight this and scroll down, you'll see one of the things that it does is it removes extreme outliers here. And if you don't want that, you just tell it not to do that. And that's where you can provide it with this user instructions. We give it our data frame. We can first convert it to a dictionary. And then this stuff right here is going to tell it if we run into an error, how many times we should go through this loop sequence. So max retries three and our initial retry count will be set to zero. Okay. All right. We can see here that it didn't have to do any retries. It just kind of it got the code right first and then the first try and, exp and um, proceeded to process it. So let's examine the results now. All right. So what happened here? First, we can see that there's going to be some response here. We stored uh, and we've got all of this stuff that we can kind of explore. So these are all of the different keys that come back from this response. It's actually a dictionary. And uh, we can go through the message, um, the user instructions, which is what we supplied here, um, the recommended steps that it came up with, uh, then the, the, what the data set looked like, what the cleaner function that was created. If there was any errors, those will show up here uh, and so on. So um, 
The first thing we want to do, uh, you know, I personally want to see what the data set looks like once it's cleaned. I mean, that's the whole goal of this this automation process. So this is actually the initial data set, the raw data set. And I'm using the info function because I want to share kind of like some of the things that you might not be able to see if you just kind of compare these two data frames side by side. But like one of the things that you'll see here is that like total charges, for example, is an object right now. Well, if you look at that data set, total charges should be a numeric value. It's an actual like, you know, value uh, per customer of, you know, what total charges they've accumulated through the lifetime that they've been a customer. All right. So that should definitely be numeric. And that's something that should be fixed. So let's check out this response data cleaned. And again, this returns a dictionary. So we got to convert it to a data frame. That's what this does. And then if we run info on that data frame, uh, we can now see that total charges is indeed a float 64. Perfect. That's actually really good. Okay, cool. Some other stuff. So we can see what data cleaning steps we're taking. Okay. So here I'm going to dig into the messages and this is where agent kind of tracks some of the, some of the things that it's doing as like AI messages. Okay. So if I take a look at response messages, that's going to return this AI message thing. And if I want, if I, we can see here, it's a list. So if I grab out the first AI message in that list, that's this zero index. And then if I grab out the content and if I pretty print that content, we can see the actual steps that were performed by the data cleaning uh, agent. We can see that these are the cleaning steps that the data cleaner function, and it's got one, two, three, like all the, all the things that it's doing. Okay, cool. So now I know exactly what that agent did to automate. And then uh, we can even see what the data cleaner function looks like. So this is really um, a cool thing because we're not just trying to give us clean data and call LLMs to, to clean our data. What we're really trying to do is create pipelines. And what a pipeline is, is, is basically a function that can be reused on our data set or any new data set. And we've got that here. So I don't need to run an, another LLM call because this thing's already created. I can actually just store it and just run it on new data. Similar data comes in. So this is really powerful. This is where the automation stuff really helps out. So you can see it's created this function called data cleaner. And then it's got some imports in there and then it's got some steps that it's actually walking through step one, step two. And you can see that this is actual Python code. Turns out that when we ran this, because we set up logging to log to this AI functions folder, it actually created an AI functions folder over here. And it's actually logged that data cleaner in a data cleaner.py file. Okay. So you can see this is the AI generated function that it created, you can see exactly what it's doing right here and we can examine that, okay? All right, so the final thing is that I, that I wanted to share is how can I reuse the data cleaning steps as I get new data? Okay, well, because we've just automated that and created this data cleaner function, what we can do is we can append this, this directory to our system paths. So if we run this, what that does is it allows our um, sys paths to be, uh, let me see, sys path. So, th so what it does is it added this O3 automate data cleaning copilot here to my system path. So now I can do from AI functions dot data cleaner, which is this right here, dot pi, import data cleaner. And if I run this, now I can take that original raw data set that has df dot info, whoops. So if I see df.info, you can see that the raw data set has object uh, data type here. When I do this, we now are running that data cleaning pipeline. And if I do info again, we can see that the total charges has been correctly converted over to float 64. And there's a bunch of other stuff going in, but you can see here, um, you know, the different things that are that are being done um, and you can explore that function even more you've got it now saved to your your file folder system so you can reuse it anytime you want pretty cool okay so next steps this is just um, we're kind of just scratching the surface with my plan for this package the ai data science team so my goal is to have like a full team of ai co-pilots that you can literally use you can pull them off the shelf when you want to use them and they're going to automate some of your common data science tasks so things like feature engineering data cleaning data wrangling 
um, all this stuff that kind of takes time and keeps you away from like actually. Um, I am looking for feedback on the AI co-pilots. So if you do try uh, my package out, which I really, really would love you guys to do, then if something doesn't work, please let me know. And if something does work that you like, also let me know that. Um, positive feedback is great. Um, and then if, there, if you see something that, that you need uh, that I have not included, let me know that too. So those are like feature requests um, or en enhancements. So if you want to give me feedback, the best way to do that, of course, you can comment on this video, but best way is actually through GitHub. And I'm going to put this link in the chat. This will take you over to my GitHub issues. You can see I've already got one here. One of my students here has, says he loves the idea, and, but he wants to, to add front-end web, web developer agent. So that actually automates the, the, the full, basically a full stack data. Issues here, you just create a new issue. All right. The last thing. So the next steps are great for helping me to, to further enhance this package, but eventually it's gonna be really important. And I think the future of data science is going to be this concept of the generative AI data scientist. And what I wanna help you become is somebody who can build these custom agents for your business, because that's what they're gonna want in the future. So um, companies right now, they're already hiring for generative AI data scientists uh, and to help you get one of those positions, which are like $200,000 a year positions, um, I have created an eight, eight week AI for data scientist bootcamp. Uh, I'm currently filling cohort three as of this recording. And um, these live cohort, these are the, this is the structure of them, uh, weeks one through eight, exactly what you learn. And then you can enroll here. I'll put the link in the chat as well. So uh, to get started, you know, I'm certainly check out the code here, run it, have fun with it, think about what ideas you want to expand on. And then as you uh, understand more about, you know, what's going on here, and if you want to take that next step to generative AI data scientists, check out the boot camp. Um, I will be posting more information about that as we speak. So uh, catch you guys next time. Uh, we'll be talking a lot more about this AI data science team. I've got some more agents that I'm getting ready to roll out. So we'll be talking about some of those soon. See ya. Bye-bye.